I played Season 20 early thanks to the EA Creator Network, and this is every one of the 100 new upgrade abilities coming to Apex this season. Now for context, and those of you who don't already know, this is the new Legend upgrade system. Every game when you level up your armor from white to blue and blue to purple, you will get the choice of one of two Legend upgrades. These upgrades vary from Legend to Legend, and you will always get the same choices when you level up from white to blue and from blue to purple. To clear up any confusion, sometimes I'm going to refer to Tier 1 upgrades, but you're going to see purple purple armor on the screen, and tier 2 upgrades and you'll see red armor on the screen. I'm pretty sure this was a visual bug on the build I was playing, but upgrades are always granted between white to blue and blue to purple. Starting things off with Octane's tier 1 upgrades, he has the choice of minus 25% stim damage or minus 25% explosive damage. The minus 25% stim damage is pretty decent, as Octane mains love shoving that needle full of stim right into their body, and as you can see, the minus 25% makes it slightly healthier to do that, and with the minus 25% explosive damage, it's actually also kind of handy because with no upgrade you get booped into the sky if you have blue armor or below but if you have the upgrade then you don't have to worry about getting booped as much which is ideal since in the lore octane did have both of his legs booped away his tier 2 upgrades have the choice of changing direction on the jump pad or plus one jump pad so you have the choice of two jump pads or a special red jump pad yes there are red jump pads in the game now and they do look pretty snazzy and as you can see here this is a controller player's dream because we can finally change directions on jump pads like PC players have been able to do since day one with tap strafing so you don't need any configs you can just do this naturally now and this is dope I love this and just so you can see the difference between that and a normal jump pad is quite a lot normal jump pad users it's a sad day for you but the red jump pad the stonks are up and you boys are going to be cooking and then there's the plus one ult charge upgrade as well for the two jump pads instead of one now this is going to be great for those of you who love to chain jump pads and chain movement this is going to be crazy and especially for those 13 year old octane mains i always get in pubs who love to run away because you guys are going to be able to run away even further now so when we all die you can go to narnia faster than ever and that's why we all love having random octane teammates but moving on to wraith's tier one upgrades she has the choice of a reduced tech cooldown or a passive which triggers when enemy squads approach so warning you about third parties which i didn't get to get footage of but without the tech cooldown upgrade we're going to be having a 25 second cooldown with the upgrade that drops to 20 seconds and with the gold helmet and the upgrade that's only 16 seconds so you wraith mains can also queue away along with your octane buddies her tier 2 upgrades are going to be a reduced alt cooldown which i'm not going to bother showing and a faster attack wind up so not only is she going to be able to queue away more she's going to be able to queue away faster so all of my brothers out there who play with wraith teammates you guys are going to get baited 10 times more often so look forward to that one just as i'm sure the fuse mains out there are going to enjoy their tier 1 upgrades of 50 percent less damage from their own ult and avoiding the slow from it or being able to see grenades through walls which we've already seen in the game before but now fuse players can walk through their own ults at no speed deduction and taking 50% less damage so I think fuse players probably cooked himself in their own ults one too many times because they have the reaction speed of 40 year old men because that's what they are but at least with this upgrade when they ult themselves it's going to be slightly less damaging to them so that's great and the tier 2 upgrades for fuse are going to be minus 25% explosive damage from grenades which is the same as Octane, or getting a speed boost from hitting knuckle clusters on enemies. So that could be cool for Fuse players if they actually learn what the W key does. My boy Pathfinder gets the choice of gaining access to a survey beacon or gaining access to a ring console for his tier 1 upgrades. And for his tier 2 upgrades, he has the choice of replenishing his grapple every time he gets a knock, or having an energized zipline, which he takes less damage on while he's zipping. I don't know why it's showing I've got a red helmet, because that still doesn't exist in Season 20, I guess. Yes, that's a bug but as you can see i'm taking 80 damage for a repeat a headshot which should be hitting me for well over 100 and when it comes to replenishing your grapple on knock you can finally do drive by as pathfinder blowing out people's brains and grappling away before they've even had a chance to comment on your massive thighs for mirage's first set of ability upgrades he has the choice of reviving allies with hp regen or adding an extra decoy to his ult and taking 30 seconds off each cooldown here's the hp regen upgrade which as you can see makes lifeline look easy even worse. If you have a Mirage on the team, you definitely won't need a lifeline as well. And if Mirage's ult cooldown wasn't already fast enough for you, the other tier 1 upgrade is going to add a decoy to his ult, so there's even more chance you're going to bamboozle people. But as the ult finishes, you're going to be well over 50% towards your next ult, so you can pretty much ult all of the time, which is pretty crazy. His tier 2 upgrades give you the choice of an extra attack charge or having bamboozles refresh your tactical. Here's the two attack charges though, I mean, you might be able to bamboozle some people, shooting two decoys and 
instead of one at once. You can also control both of them, which might be confusing to some level 2 players, I don't know. But the other ability of having Bamboozle refresh your tactical goes absolutely crazy because you can just spam as many decoys as the enemies fall for. And I just know all of my absolute gaming warlords down in silver and gold are licking their lips, rubbing their hands together, knowing that this Mirage buff is what is going to take them all the way to the glory lands of Platinum. Watson's first set of upgrades are going to give her the choice of reviving allies to 50 HP or changing her ult so that when it intercepts grenades, it drops arc stars that you can pick up and throw right back at people. And this is absolutely as crazy as it sounds. I mean, look at this. Even Caustic's ult is turning into an arc star that you can lob back at him, which is absolutely gorgeous. But wait until you see what it does with Gibby ults. I mean, look at this. It's, it's raining arc stars. It's a beautiful thing to see. Now, there is a limit on this, but that's probably a good thing. And our second set of upgrades gives you the choice of doubling the ult's HP and shield recharge capacity, or doubling the amount of ults you can put down at once, and increasing the ult accelerant speed. The only downside to this upgrade is that it does half the amount of shield healing each ult has, so you'd have to put two down in order to get the full amount of shield healing that one regular gen would have, but having two ults can also help you cover way more ground, so it's up to you which you find to be more valuable. And as you can see here, the upgrade to make the pylon's health and shield capacity stronger is going to beef up that boy to 300 HP. He, he a beefy boy, he's not going to be easy to destroy. Every controller player's favourite legend Horizon gets the tier 1 upgrades of being able to see grenades through walls or being able to see which ammo is in death boxes before opening them, so some pretty chill tier 1 abilities. And her tier 2 upgrades are also nothing crazy with a reduced tack cooldown or a minus 14% on the ult cooldown. Honestly I'm pretty happy they went with some chill Horizon upgrades because, let's be honest, we, we don't need Horizon getting juiced up even more. She's already absolutely filthy and the tack cooldown is going to take her tack from a 25 second cooldown down to a 20 second cooldown just like Rafe's Q. Crypto on the other hand is definitely getting some love with his upgrades but maybe not in the tier 1 section where he has the choice of reduced tack cooldown or reduced ult cooldown. Pretty boring but when you juice this boy up to purple he has the choice of 50% bigger passive and ult range or calling out the amount of squads in the area when he deploys his drone which is definitely a useful ability to tell you how many squads are in the area without looking at banners like he usually has to. Chua, there are no squads near us. But what really gets me excited for Crypto mains is the 50% bigger ult and tactical range because this is his normal ult size which is alright it's decent but look at the size of this when it's 50% bigger that is big and round and plumpy we love to see it for you Crypto mains. Rampart's tier 1 upgrades are going to be a minus 20% on her ult cooldown or being able to carry extra ammo per stack that ability is going to give her the choice of carrying 80 ammo per stack instead of 60 essentially making her an assault legend. And her Tier 2 upgrades are going to be faster reloads with Sheila and behind amp cover, or improved Sheila handling and spin up time, which definitely makes Sheila so much easier to use. You can move faster, aim faster, spin her up quicker, and this is probably the best gun in the game, let's be honest. So, you might see a lot of Rampart mains running around with Sheila with this ability. And this is going to be the amped reloads ability here with faster reloading on Sheila and behind amped cover. I tried doubling it up with Sheila and amped cover here, but to me, it just looks the same as Rampart's normal reload on Sheila, but I wouldn't know because like most people, I don't play Rampart. Bangalore's reward for leveling up from white to blue is going to be minus 25% on her ult cooldown or seeing grenades through walls and death boxes. Both extremely boring abilities, but her tier 2 upgrades however are not boring at all, giving you the choice of auto pinging enemies who trigger her passive or regenerating her HP inside smoke. I didn't get the chance to test the auto pinging enemies, but regening health inside smoke is about as good as it sounds. I mean, it's pretty slow. It looks to be about as fast as Octane's passive health regen, and also comes with a side of controller players' tears for bang mains to drink while they heal in the no aim assist area. I didn't actually get the chance to try Ash's tier 1 upgrades, but she has the choice of calling out nearby enemy squads after wiping a squad, or marking for death revealing enemies' locations for an entire minute, so I hope you like wallhack abilities. Both of her tier 2 upgrades, however, change the way her arc snare works, with one giving you an entire extra arc snare charge, and the other one making the arc snare last much longer and be able to capture more than one enemy. I tried to show this one on the dummy, but for some reason he was just getting zapped the whole time. This upgrade doesn't change how long you get stunned for, but for some reason this dummy must have pissed off Zeus or something. Strike me down, Zeus. 
but at least you can see how long the arc snare lasts for. And one thing to note with the two arc snare charges is that you can't spam the arc snares one after another. They do have a short cooldown in between the arc snares, so you might need to remember that if you're one of the two Ash mains in the world. And talking of legends with no mains, my boy Ballistic is gonna have even less people playing him after they see his tier 1 abilities are revealing care packages or seeing ammo in death boxes. And by that, I mean you can see how much ammo or what types of ammo are in death boxes before you go into them. Ballistic mains, you're cooking, boys. For his tier 2 abilities, he does actually have some pretty nice ones. With the choice of adding a second bullet to his smart pistol, or having the choice of making his one bullet last three times longer in the world. Now, that doesn't mean it's gonna last three times longer on your enemy, though, and we'll get to that. But this is what the two smart bullets look like. It's gonna be pretty good for sieging teams, but you're gonna have to get all the way up to purple until you're able to do this, so that's quite a big trade off. And as you can see here, I'm being a bit dumb. I think the three times length on the bullet means it's gonna last three times longer on the dummy, but it doesn't. And onto everyone's favorite legend to fight against, it's Lifeline, whose tier 1s are the choices of 20% faster reviving or minus 10 seconds on the attack cooldown, but we all know nobody's taking that. And for her tier 2 upgrades, she gets the choice of a self-revive or being able to call in an actual game package instead of her Lifeline care package with her ultimate, and as I tried to do that in the range here to show you exactly what that means, it crashed the server, so unlucky guys, go now. Next. And the self revive is exactly what you think it is, and I imagine this will pair pretty well with the 20% faster revive speed. You do only get it one time per player, so you're not going to get multiple self revives, but the one thing you do get is the opportunity to interrupt your self revive to pull up your knockdown shield so you can really put pressure on whoever's pushing you into making sure they finish you. Big Brother Gibby gets some pretty nice tier 1 upgrades with the choice of reviving allies to 50 HP or having shotguns auto reload every time they get a knock. Both of his tier 2 upgrades are affect the way his bubble works, with one making them smaller but with a faster cooldown, and the other one adding 4 seconds to the bubble's lifespan. And to show off the bubble size difference, here is a normal, regular sized bubble, which is, as you would expect, pretty big and pretty round, just like Gibby likes it. But with the upgrade, a pretty small amount of the bubble is actually taken off, it's still pretty decent sized, and you're gonna get way more of them because the cooldown is shorter, so that's not a bad upgrade. Both of Bloodhound's tier 1 upgrades are pretty boring to show, you've got a reduced tactical cooldown, or scanning White Ravens charging your ult. Now, I don't know if this is being taken away from their base kit or not. That's yet to be seen, but assuming that it will be because otherwise it wouldn't be an upgrade. But their tier 2 upgrades are pretty decent, with one granting you 25 HP back for every knock you get whilst in ult, or the other one doubling the attack full body scan duration. So here's me mercilessly taking down the gaming merchant a few times to show you the 25 HP return upgrade. The most important thing to note with this is it's only going to heal your flesh and it's not going to give you shield heals. And here's a side by side on the scan duration upgrade to show you how much of a wall hack advantage this upgrade is actually going to give you. But now for my favorite legend upgrades in the entire game. We have Mad Maggie who has the choice for her tier 1s of an extra riot drill with minus 25% active duration or a beefier riot drill with 1.5 times depth and width of tag. But it's going to be a long day for whoever you're fighting when you've got two riot drills. And while they did make the duration of the riot drills a little bit shorter, it doesn't matter too much as the extra charge is going to make up for that. But talking about covering a bigger area, the bigger drill is massive. It's large. I mean, this is a big chonky boy, so maybe you might think twice before going straight for the two charges, but what's even scarier than the big beefy drill is Maggie's tier 2 upgrades, with the choice of auto-reloading shotguns on Nox, or my personal favorite upgrade in the game, a fireball on her ultimate, and that is the only way you can describe this. I mean, look at this ultimate. It explodes into a giant cross of thermite grenade, and I don't know if this was a bug in the build I was playing, but it actually explodes twice, so it's yet to be seen in-game if this actually is going to work on release. But if it does, that's absolutely nuts. And even if it doesn't, the thermite explosion is so crazy, I had to show it twice. Now, interestingly, Catalyst's first set of upgrades is going to allow you to revert one of her previous nerfs. And by that, I mean you're going to have the choice of being able to throw your ferro fluid even further or having an extra spike active at all times. And seeing this upgrade in the range really opened my eyes to just how far you used to be able to yeet these traps. And now you can do it again. So I hope you like getting splooged on, guys. And just to show you, 
you, yes, the extra active spikes does mean you can have three traps active at once now before you have to remove one. And onto her second set of abilities, she has the choice of increasing her ult's lifetime or its length. And the one I really wanted to showcase was the length increase. As you can see, it's 27% longer. And compared to the regular cat wall, as you can see here, it's a decent chunk bigger. So you're going to be able to cover more ground and rotate a lot more safely. Now, my wife's tier one upgrade is going to be a black market range increase or Loba being able to take an extra item from her black market. The market range increase is a pretty large round spherical area, which is something Loba is pretty used to already, but it's going to allow you and your team to potentially get more loot in the long run in comparison to her other ability, which only allows her to get more loot in the long run. So if you're feeling selfish or if you're solo queuing, I guess that's probably the one you'll take. And talking of solo queue, both of her tier two upgrades are going to revolve around her tactical, which is going to be good for you solo ranking rats who like to run away and craft banners. But anyway, we have a reduced tack cooldown or an increased tack height range, which is absolutely nuts. You can yeet yourself onto the top of buildings now. It's crazy. This makes Loba's tactical one of the best tacticals in the game, in my opinion. Definitely one of the best movement tacticals. So you can run away, craft banners, and res your dead teammates for the fifth time in one game. Conduit's first set of upgrades are going to be being able to see shield batteries on death boxes before you go into them or increasing the proximity of her alt mine damage. It's pretty large and round once again. Uh, don't don't go in these. It'll hurt you. And for her tier 2 upgrades, she has the choice of increasing attack charge, but minus 50% on the shield heal duration of that charge, or a 15% attack range increase. Here's me trying the double attack charge on the gaming merchant, and you can see it doesn't heal that much at all. Now, you can double tap the same player twice, but why would you do that when you could just have one charge that does it all at once? I couldn't really work out why you would ever pick this, but it's a thing, so maybe you might want to do that. Something else you're definitely going to want to do is yeet caustic barrels with his tier 1 upgrades, which allows you to increase the attack throw range by 75%, or you might want to increase your gas alt area by a bit. But onto the more important change first, the 75% extra attack throw range. This is crazy. Now, the original throw range is, is not too bad, all right? It's, it's, not, it's not awful, but the 75% increase, now this is what I'm talking about. You can absolutely yeet these traps like grenades now. It's a beautiful thing to see. But for real, potentially the better upgrade option here is the alt size increase because everyone knows how strong Caustic Alt is and it's already pretty sizable anyway, but to increase that size even more is going to make for some pretty scary ranked end games. I can already see it. Get ready to choke on the green stuff and I'm not talking about Shrek's <coughs> tier 2 upgrades incoming. He has the choice of being able to heal in his own gas or being able to see people with his Nox vision for a little bit longer. I couldn't really see this in the firing range, but I'm assuming the gas scan lasts a little bit longer after people walk out of the gas. And similarly to Bangalore's upgrade, the health regen in the gas is a little bit slow, but it's good if you're a caustic who loves to live and breathe and die in his own odor, which let's be honest, as gamers, we are all doing anyway. Newcastle's first set of upgrades gives him the choice of plus 250 HP to his mobile shield or increasing the speed of his mobile shield. The speed increase one is a massive game changer in my opinion, because my biggest issue with Newcastle was not being able to run at the same speed as the shield. But now with this upgrade, you can absolutely use it as a battering ram to run at teams, which I absolutely love. And look at this boy. He is now super speedy. Not even Octane could outrun this little fella. And for his tier 2 upgrades, he has the choice of reviving allies with a health regen or increasing the castle wall HP and energize duration. Now that is going to last for an entire two minutes. And I almost stood here and watched it for you because I thought that would be good content, but then I I decided not to. Revenant's first upgrades given the choice of a reduced tactical cooldown or after a squad wipe calling out how many nearby squads there are. And his tier 2 upgrades are going to be minus 20% on tack charge time or tack refresh on knock. Here's a little visual reference of the minus 20% tack charge time so you can leap a lot farther a lot quicker. And just like Pathfinder with the tack refresh on knock you can pounce on your enemies knock them down and pounce away but unlike Pathfinder the pounce is going to take a little bit of a wind up time so it might not be the best for drive fire. And then we have Valk, who's making her comeback from being replaced in the meta by a literal piece of rubber, with the choice of launching higher with Skyward Dive or improved jetpack handling for her first set of upgrades. And I gotta admit, the improved jetpack handling really does make a massive difference. She becomes buttery smooth. You're gliding, baby. It's nice. You're going up, down, left, right, as smooth as you like. And for the increased height on the Skyward Dive, it's literally what it says on the tin. Here is a regular Skyward Dive height.
height, it's pretty regular looking and pretty high as well, but not as high as the upgraded version, which takes you a pretty decent chunk higher. It might be the difference between you making that rotation or not. I don't know. Maybe you'll still use a balloon. I know I probably will. Her tier two upgrades are widening her missile swarm to a three by five grid instead of a four by three grid or adding 25% extra jetpack fuel. I don't know if it's just me, but I barely ever use Valk's tack, but increasing the grid size is a pretty nice buff to it. I mean, it's going to cover more ground. It's not going to be as long, but it is going to be wider. So definitely an important time to consider if you prefer length or girth in your Valk tack. And then the much easier to explain one is of course the extra jetpack fuel, which is going to allow you to buzz around in the air for a little bit longer. A very epic moment for all my fellow controller players out there. We have free movement for slightly longer. Hooray. <laughs> Vantage's tier one upgrades are going to give her the choice of being able to use a ring console or the alt excels will give you four bullets instead of two. That's a lot of bullets. It's going to do a lot of damage. Her tier two upgrades gives you the choice of improved tack double jump or refreshing tack on hits with her alt. So a little bit different. You don't have to knock anyone. You just have to hit your alt. However, neither of these seem to work in the firing range. So I'm not going to show you them. And last but not least, except for in pick rate, we have Sia, whose first upgrades give him the choice of plus 25 meters on his passive tactical range or faster movement using his passive. Honestly, I didn't think much of the plus 25 meters on the passive or tactical, but when you actually look at it in game, that's quite a long range that he then gets to look at with his passive and tactical. So that's quite nice. It's actually going to make a big difference for Sia. And then with the faster movement, you're going to go from being a bit of a bozo with your gloves up caught in the axe to a speedy boy zooming around with your fingers waggling at people saying, ooh, I'm coming for you. And then you're going to scan them and probably annoy them. And his tier two upgrades are going to be 1.5 seconds additional scan duration or a plus 20 meters on the alt throw range. And that makes a big difference to this alt because they nerfed it pretty hard. So you can yeet it once again and let all the enemies know that there is a dangerous alt in the area that they should all be very, 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 very scared of. That is going to be every single one of the hundred new upgrade abilities coming to Apex Legends. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and please tell your dad there's more legends in the game than Fuse.